This video is a somewhat podcast format of me having a discussion with Spark Mageddon. Spark Mageddon is a dear long friend of mine who I have known since I was 7 years old, who has been extremely passionate about games large and small ever since I have known him. He currently makes videos on YouTube of the games that he enjoys to play. He enjoys to draw, create worlds, and most importantly of all, is an amazing individual. We currently are co-workers, friends, and spend a lot of time together that I'm overall really grateful for. The reason I'm uploading a conversation like this is mostly for selfish reasons. I'd like to have the opportunity to look back on conversations I have with people, either they be friends or individuals I really admire, to both see our growth and understanding as people, but as well as to initiate really meaningful conversations with people I think have important things to say that society may or may not choose to give the light of day. My hope is that if someone else chooses to watch this, they're able to take away something like both of us had here. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Dude, I've been freaking watching uh, the freaking D&D stuff still, and like, oh god. So, like, I laugh so hard every single time. It's so freaking funny. Like, yeah, I think <laughs> so I've, funny. I've seen that you've been watching it and stuff. Well, I just like when we're working, I don't really know. I'm like halfway mentally in my own world. And then also like, I guess what I'm trying to say is I try to focus on the work. But at the same time, like I'm trying to listen to you, but. Mm. Yeah. You might need to kind of describe to me, like, what it's about. Well, because I know you're watching the little Harry Potter series. I mean, basically, yeah. It's just four of them are in a school that are American, brought into a British school, and they're basically like figuring out like magic is real and you have it. And there's like all these other conspiracies that are going on that they're finding out and like the headmaster seems evil or more of like a dickish sort of thing I don't know how else to describe it of like uh what it, I don't what know, they just kind of like do school shit what are those uh what's the channel called for it so dimension 20 and they have uh, a place for all of their, like, series. So there's some free episodes, but some of them, they have, like, one free episode, and then the rest you have to, like, go and watch on Dropout, which is an app or website. And it's, like, five bucks a month. So you watch it through the website? Yeah, I'm watching it through the website right now. I got like a three day free trial. Mm. Cause I said fuck it. Is that the one that's got Bobby Lee? No. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. They did an episode with Bobby Lee. Uh, oh, but he's not like a a regular or whatever. Not doesn't look like it. No. Mm. It, it was just like a one shot they did with him. But they also did like a parody on uh, Lord of the Rings. And they were the bad guys. That one was kind of funny. How long of a series do they typically do? I think it depends on the series. So like this one. Oh god. Where, where, is, where is it? Where is it? This one's called Misfits and Magic, and it's like two seasons. So the first one's like four episodes, and the second one, never mind, is a special. So it's four episodes. And then the specials are... There's a holiday special, and then one that was like live at Gen Con. That's interesting. How's your D&D stuff coming? Yeah. 
I would say it's okay. It's not like fully fleshed out yet. Because I still need to do like other stuff of like the world and learning like what to put in how to I don't know I just need to read more of the book cuz I'm still on the the thing of like religions and the world itself of like gods and all this stuff do you do you like plan on DMing for it or is it just something that you're doing for fun it's like a bit of both because the whole thing was like, okay, it was, I think it more of I'm planning to DM because like Gavin was like, we should do D&D because why not? Like saying something about it. I'm like, yeah, I think like if you actually really want to do it, I'd be interested to like DM if you wanted someone to DM because that seems kind of fun. Um, And then Gavin was like, that one day, it was me, Gavin Cole, and Gavin's girlfriend. They didn't seem in interested, but Gavin was, like, all for it. We didn't even really get into it because I was like, oh, I'm realizing there's a lot more to the to this than just hopping in and taking a one-shot and just playing it, right? Yeah. So, I'm like, okay, I'll, you know what, uh, you know, it was like, some people aren't interested, they're not paying attention, so I'm going to learn about D, &D. i'm gonna read about it how it works as a dm what do i need to think about like the roles what uh, certain things they're doing would be considered right because you have specific stats that are like oh if you're doing a sleight of hand that's going to be a, a dexterity check or this check or whatever and i need to know that um Describing is a different thing because that's like on the fly, but knowing your world is also a thing. So it's like, okay, I know what this world is. I know what to describe in general. And then uh, the rest of that's just going to be like, okay, this is the general design of this, but what would be here and how would I describe it after someone does something that's like, I was not expecting that, right? Because it's a it's um what's the word like improv kind of Im improv is the word because it's like i uh, obviously in D D, you're like oh i'm gonna make this world set it like tell you what it where you are how it looks what you can see um and i have to know what is in this area so then if someone makes a certain check it's like oh you can see something that most others can't and it's like this tiny little bottle that's glowing blue or something like that, depending on what check they do. But I have to know what's in that area. So making the world is a good idea because it's like, I know what's in the area. I know what items they can get and look for. Um, but it's like, I don't know what they're going to do. They could probably set the whole place on fire. And then I'll be like, well... <sighs> Everything's burning to the ground. You got to fucking leave or some shit. I don't you're, know. It's You're like a mini James cool. Cameron. Basically. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, okay, I have to know. Like, obviously, you're trying to lead them somewhere. But like, I don't know. You have to have like basics like. it. The Knowing the area itself, I think, is a little bit easier because it's one inanimate objects and you're like okay i know what's in here and all that but the harder part's going to be when they are talking to an npc and it's like i have to create npcs i have to know how they're going to act um how they're going to react and like what they do and how they are right so then it's like if someone does something it's like how hard of a role like let's let's say you're talking to a barkeep and he's very like perceptive or something right and someone's trying to steal something i gotta be like okay how perceptive is he how would he react to that so it's like how how hard of a skill check would that have to be um how would he react would he kick him out or would he start a fight or he'll just be like that's a warning right how it's like you have to go in depth of 
each character, each NPC, the people in the world, and how they will act and react to the players. Right? Yeah. And even the players have to think about how their characters would react if they want to, like, have them be more in-depth. But if they're making a character that's in-depth, they're going to have to think about, like, what would my character do in this situation? Just so then it's not, like, random stuff. You can, but if some people, I think, are more into role-playing and will actually, like, pay attention to that. But if Uh not, that's fine, because it's like, you're just going to do what you want. I'm just going to be the mediator of what I will allow and won't allow. But it's like, I don't want my characters... Like, if, if player characters are feeling kind of random, it's fine, because it's like, that's their choice. But for me, I don't want my characters to feel random, because then it's easier to be, like, for the players to understand what is going on, right? Because you don't want it to be difficult to be like, what am I supposed to do with this guy if he's just going to be this way and this way, or something? Yeah. I'm now going on a rant, and I realize I don't know what I was talking about or what my point was. No, I think what you were saying, like, was making me think of when I played D&D with everybody and I played with Down and stuff, like... Mm -hmm. Because we were playing with Chase one day, right? And we were talking about the fucking soup, and he's like, guys, enough about the soup, and he was getting kind of upset, and it's like, (laughs) you just gotta let people play. So, like, if that, like, that's a thing that I thought about was like, you got to let people play, but also you want them to do the things that your story is about. So you're going to like, you have to think of like, if they're not paying attention to something or they're not like focused or they're taking too long to move, you have to put something like, okay, they're having fun, whatever. I'm going to make a little thing happen. So then their focus gets put onto that. And then it's like, like with the soup thing, he, we could have just been like, he could have been ha- like letting us all with the soup and he could have just been like while you guys are doing that you s- you kind of hear a noise as if something big has fallen over a couple rooms down and then that gets their attention or something big like you hear something scurrying towards your position or something like that where they hear a noise or something blasts through the door or something happens right hmm to then grab the people's attention from having fun and like just goofing off and then put it right back onto like, oh yeah, we are in danger. We probably got to go do something or we're in this building, right? Is what I've kind of been noticing watching these, um, uh, these D and D sessions because everyone's going to have fun. They're going to make jokes and they constantly keep talking because they're like having it. They're, you know, it's like talking, you know, you're making jokes back and forth. If it's too long and you're like, we're going to be here forever, I don't want this to be like a five-hour one when it was supposed to be a three-hour session. Yeah. Um, You could be like, while that's happening, this happens. Or you notice this or something. Like, you can't just, like, yell at people and be like, you have to do this. Like, um, I don't know, it's weird. But go on what you were saying about Dallin and them. Well, I was was going to say, like... My experiences with D&D has been, like, when I played with Dallin, Mm -hmm. like, Dallin played very much against the entire group, and I think that just that one person with, like, really conflicting interests compared to the group can completely ruin a session. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of, like how hard it is to actually get like a quote unquote good session of D and D. And I was going to ask if like those dimension 20 people, if they've had people like that. I, I don't know because I haven't seen enough of their stuff, but I feel like these, the people that they have that are playing are like, know what D and D is. They're like veterans, quote unquote, or like they're they're used to it, right? They've been playing D and D for a bit, so they understand what's going on, right? Or they're friends and they understand things. And I think even with conflicting uh things going on, they still kind of go like I don't know. I, I don't think so. It doesn't seem that way because like because uh, I know that some uh, DMs want to kill their players because they're like, dude, I want you to die from this because this would be funny or something like that. But, like, if it doesn't happen, they're not going to 
do something about it. Like uh-huh. so far, it doesn't look like they're fighting against each other or conflicting. It seems like it's natural, or they know what's going on, or they it, understand. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I've like I feel like because I've played D and D with like Chase's group, and then I played D and D with like Nathan's uh mm-hmm. friend group. But even then, like, Nathan's friend group were, like, everyone I've played with has kind of felt unexperienced, is how I'd put it. To where when I played with Nathan's group, I didn't really get much stage room. So, so you didn't really get, like, enough experience in stage to actually experience the game. It Like, you're... It's what it sounds like is you didn't get enough time to actually experience what's going on, have actually your turn to engage into the story and do your thing, right? Is that? Yeah, and I feel like for me, because of my experiences with that, it's made D&D not really that appealing, personally. And I can see that, because it's like, obviously, like, experiences, you know, it's different depending on who you're playing with. But what I was, what I actually, in the dungeon book and i'm actually looking at the book now and uh looking at it Uh it literally has a section saying know your players the success of a DD game hinges on your ability to entertain the players at the game table whereas their role is to create characters the protagonists of the campaign breathe life into them and help steer the campaign through the characters actions your role is to keep the players and yourself interested and immersed in the world you've created and to let their characters do awesome things Knowing what your players enjoy most about the D&D game helps you create and run adventures that they will enjoy and remember. Once you know which of the following activities each player in your group enjoys the most, you can tailor adventures that satisfy your players' preferences as much as possible, thus keeping them engaged. And then it goes on a list of like things that people do. So like acting. Players who enjoy acting like getting into character and speaking in their characters' voices, role players at heart. They enjoy social interactions with NPCs, monsters, and the fellow parties. And it gives you examples of, like, here's how you can engage people who act by giving them opportunities to develop their characters, personalities, or backgrounds, allowing them to interact regularly with the NPCs, adding role play elements to combat encounters, uh, incorporate elements from their characters' backgrounds into your adventures, which, speaking of that... Um, there's actually an example of that where in th- this was a critical world one and it was a free thing that I watched which was the calamity uh one I forgot what the whole series was Brennan's DMing and there's a point where one of the characters has like kids right yeah and some serious stuff's going on and because like he took something from that character's background with his kids and you, the dude just leaves, is about to leave, and then he, he's like, you hear a ringing, and he's like, I pick it up, and basically you're, it's like a phone call, and he's like, hello? And Brennan's like, Eagle One to Wingspan, um, this is, uh, it's like, Eagle One, this is Wingspan, and he's playing as the dude's, the play, like, the character's son, to, mm. like, lighten the mood a bit, and that's, like, a great way to, like, people who like role playing it's like that's something that like could happen where like you're in the middle of a job and your kid just like calls you on the phone and his kids like uh uh it was like saying like another code name for his sister and he's like uh she's sneaking out to like a party she walked into the kitchen and like grabbed uh like a drink she tasted it and had like a face that was gross and then drank it again i don't i don't know what that was and the the dude who was playing was like, okay, 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 listen. Uh, and the like, was like role playing as if he was talking to the kid. And I think that's so cool. And like, that's something you can do for people for acting. Like, that's an example of that. Do you feel like you're a good role player? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is the thing. I think it's an experience thing of, I think I could be. But my issue is, like, not knowing what to do in a situation, right? Uh, like, what would be a funny thing to do? Um, how, like, I think the issue of role-playing is not only... you do, Like, it's not like a thing that you're just good at. 
Some people are, but it's also a thing you could learn to be good at uh -huh. if you are interested. Because it's like, you can just make a character, but to make it a good role play is to actually understand your character, how they would react. Like, it's actually understanding what events could happen in real life, even. Or just, like, funny little things that would make sense. Hmm. Well, like, I don't think I'm a good role player yet. But, uh, I, I don't know. I always make stupid jokes. And, like, go with the flow of, like, other people's jokes or certain things. Um, but I think it also heavily depends on your improv like your improv skills as well yeah but how how is your map doing have you expanded I on have, that i have not worked on that for a minute i've been doing <laughs> really bad with like staying on top of my schedule and actually doing stuff it's bad it's not great but at least it's like i'm still i don't know it's it's where it was last like what you saw was mm. just the chunk of it and like the actual map i just need to go further in depth of the other places like so, what they look like and shit i don't know so which one do you think you're gonna prioritize more than do you think you're gonna prioritize your youtube stuff or are you oh. gonna or are you gonna focus on D D more and that's that's the issue is or do, do both because I would, I think I would like to do both, but I know that's not as easy because with, I think the thing with that is I could do both. The issue is I would need to actually stay on top of it, actually have a good schedule and routine and habits that allow me to do both. Hmm easily but maybe i should I, I wonder if i should like focus on one because if i have two things that's overwhelming to try to keep track of if i have one thing it's like okay i'm gonna do this and then it starts helping that habit instead of being overwhelmed with like multiple things because like oh i gotta do this i have to do that do I have time and stuff like that? But if I like choose one thing to focus on for a little while, then maybe it might help with like good, better habits and like staying on top of it and not feeling overwhelmed. You know, I think if you were to a if you were able to, uh. If you feel like your habits aren't good, I feel like you could improve your habits mm -hmm. and then For sure. using your routine. I think you could actually implement a D&D &D thing into YouTube if you're, especially what's the show called? It's Dimension 20. Yeah, I actually thought about that. It is Dimension 20 where I could, I was like, well, if I really feel like I'm decent or like I get good at D&D &D or something, maybe that's something of like, hey, let's record this and put it on YouTube because so many people do it right yeah and it's like maybe that's something because i know a lot of people like D D, and i've had that thought of if i feel confident or good enough at like being a dm maybe it's a youtube thing or maybe even just throw it on there anyway be like here's my first dming uh playthrough so like let's go or something like that i don't know but i, I thought about that as putting like mixing both together yeah, and and plus you have roll twenty, so you could really grab people that you think are great conversationalists for that. Mm -hmm. Um, were you gonna say something? No, I just said. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, but I think I might have said roll twenty under my breath because I was typing it in. Oh, roll twenty. Yeah, it's like a website that uh, Kobe would use to play D&D. &D. And I think I yeah. used it with Joe a little bit to just try I, it out. I think me and you both did because it was when I had a laptop 
and still working at Barrowold. Yeah, because I think I so my only times playing D and D was one time with Joe, right, where mm-hmm. we're on the computer, and the other time was with um, uh, Chase hmm. and the soup. But I think those are the only like two times that and I actually soup. played the soup. Uh, the but soup. I think those are the only two times I played, and it was like I was like, I I think. I had the same experience as you in a, in, well, maybe not the exact same, but like, kind of like, I just don't know about this because it was like, it wasn't super fun. It didn't seem that great. No one knew what they were doing. So it was a little harder, but like the more I look at it and watch videos and stuff, I'm like, we're not going to have the same experience, but like, as like these videos, but I want to at least try and the more i think about it the more i'm like it should just be about having fun anyway yeah and like after maybe learning more about this it it gets me more intrigued to give it a shot again you know because i'm like oh this is how it should well not should be but like this is like a good example of like this is what it could be Uh uh-huh and like that's how i kind of want to build up to i don't know Oh, shit. Well, speaking of having fun, what have you done today that you've had fun yeah. doing? I think I saw you were playing Resident Evil 4, but I could be wrong. I was not. I was playing... <laughs> um, today, I played a little bit of... I, I was hanging out with Gavin and Cole, and Gavin's oh, okay. girlfriend. Because yesterday they came and hung out. Uh, we played some games. Mario Party and stuff. I won with like five stars. Oh, or, like, damn. Six. Um, Who lost? Uh, like the worst. Everyone else. Like the worst, <laughs> it was Gavin. So like, <laughs> yeah, last night I'm like, it's like neck and neck almost. So like Gavin's girlfriend had like four stars and some odd coins. Um, I had five and like a hundred some odd coins. Cole had like three cause he just got a star and it was my turn and I was last to go. So Gavin had two, Cole had three stars. Gavin's girlfriend had four. I go up and I'm like, uh, Hey Cole, you got, you just got that star, right? Cause I grabbed the, uh, the boo and I'm like, you just got that star, right? And I'm like, hmm. And I just like flick over to Gavin and steal his instead. So he goes to one and he's sitting there with my uh my like little one-eyed monster green hat and mm-hmm. has the little danglies twisted around his face. So it looks like a mustache. And his eyes are just dead. Like he had no expression of nothing. <laughs> I'm like, so Gavin, how you feeling? And I like look over and he's dead. No expression, no, no nothing out of his eyes. And I'm like laughing my ass off. Dude, um, bully, getting bullied in uh, Mario Party is probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Oh, yeah, because Chase and Cody were like demolishing me that one time. <laughs> and I was like, I was sitting there and I felt so bad because I'm like, dude, Kate my heart does not was broken. That's terrible. I, I like. And, like, I had a chance of losing, but I didn't care because I was just having a good time. It was fun. Um, But uh, today I was just, like, kind of chilling, talking, and playing. Uh, I played Breath of the Wild for a bit and then played a, a round of Monster Hunter. And then I'm like, I don't know what I want to do because I'm still trying to be like, do I want to do this right now? I don't know. Stop mm, playing and just... I'm excited for Tears of the Kingdom same because i looked at it i'm like the 12th i yeah. work the 12th and i am so ready for that like i'm going to buy that game on friday and i even looked at my my uh, bank account and i'm like what can i afford right now <laughs> and so i did the math and i'm like okay i'll be fine because like i did the math of gas because if we're going to the concert thursday yeah i'll give you like 20 bucks for gas or something yeah but i did 40 for when i have to fill it now 40 again just in case if i have to fill it i'll probably have to fill it again uh coming like going up to malad and back uh so like 
and then a 20. So I added that up. I added the, another 70 for the game and then 200 for a payment and then 45 for phone. And I'm like, I'll be fine. I just cannot buy anything else. Money, finance. I also uh, bought just yesterday uh, a new Vanos set of clothes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's it's um called uh, the Ron set. Uh-huh. So they're playing GTA and they're playing GTA 5 and they're doing missions that like they're getting drugs or something and they had to get like a it looked like a, a burger van, like a fast food truck or something. And for some reason, they started the a joke of like, Ronald McDonald's or uh, here's our Ron burgers and stuff. And so they just had the joke of Ron, like uh, McDonald's and their new uh, set is just has the word Ron on it. And it's fucking awesome. And I love it. I'm very curious to see the Ron set. Let me... I actually have the link right here. There you go. Oh, man. And I'm like... And because obviously I'm a geek and a fan of this, I actually looked at it. I'm like, you know what? I actually vibe vibe with this. (laughs) Not even going to lie. I actually vibe with this. Really got that McDonald's merch. I actually like the color of the hat, though. Mm-hmm, same. It's nice and red. The shirt design <laughs> looks really cool. I like the shirt. Like, that's on the back. Mm. You get some shorts and the hat. It just says Ron. Imagine just, like, walking into a place and the word says, it just says Ron on it. Everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck? What is, who's Ron? Don't worry about it. Forget about it. Don't worry. <laughs> but, like, I actually like this set a lot for some reason i'm just like fuck it i'm down for it i'm gonna get this so when you make youtube stuff are you trying to shoot to be like eventually like banos i don't know i've never thought about it honestly but i would say like probably just because it's like it's like a mix of like vanos and markiplier probably yeah just because I like watching Let's Plays and the people react to certain games. I like also just watching goofy stuff happen. So, like, Vanoss is great for that because it's just, oh, you're having fun, you're playing with your friends, fun stuff happens. Or things of maybe a Let's Play, and it's like, oh, people get to watch a certain game unfold and, like, watch their reaction, and it's, like, relaxing sometimes. Or even, like, I don't know what else. There's, like, anything of creating. Like, a mixture of things. But I know I should probably focus on one type of thing. Build up an audience and then branch out. If, if like, that's a better idea to, like... Because, like, if you branch out, people are going to be like, what is this channel about or whatever. And it might be harder to, like focused on it i don't know what i'm trying to say but yeah i i've always really liked making stuff on my own whether it comes to like youtube or music obviously mm-hmm. my my experience with it has been like i i feel like if you're to make stuff like banos you have to have such a good group of friends that are like also trying to do the same stuff that you're doing because i think probably all of vanos's friends have youtube channels too yes and they're all they're they're all in the same end goal of trying to make a good video of something that's very entertaining and i feel like with a lot of the people that we've been surrounded with uh, at least for me i'll speak for me but uh i felt like i've just made better stuff on my own personally right so I think, I think, like, if you were to do stuff with Vanoss, I honestly think you would have to try to meet people who are similar in like that regard. Minded. Yeah, want to do the Vanoss stuff like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because with... My desk is a mess, god damn. <laughs> Hold on. With... 
I've played so like most of the funnier videos that I've made, um, that are more like ah, ha ha goofy whatever. Are so a lot of the stuff I've done so far is just by myself. Right? Yeah. Because I played Operation Tango with you. I did mm -hmm. Green Hell, Paparazzi, Death Store, No Straight Roads. Most of these are not even finished like things, which is really not a good uh, image to like see someone play stuff and not finish um, well, playthroughs. But I've... stuff happens. Just do whatever you want, man. Yeah. Um, I've That's played, my philosophy. Like, just do whatever you want. Yeah. Because, like, most of the stuff I have on my YouTube channel are just me playing by myself. Uh, the Monster Hunter one, I kind of understand the thing of, like, maybe the intro is way too long because it was, like, three fucking minutes of just this insane, like, movie-type trailer and then the rest was just me hunting and doing stuff. So that might, like, get people's attention away because they're like, what is this I, video about? I also, I watched a couple videos last night of, like, the intro was, like, six or seven minutes long of, like, really cinematic stuff. But I really liked it. Yeah. Though, so. like, I, my freaking, that was, like, I, I have fun editing. Like, most of the stuff recently has been fun to edit. But the most fun thing was that Monster Hunter video of making just, like, this trailer of just, like, oh, look at these monsters and what I'm doing. It was so freaking fun. And I just played that by myself. I had moments of Valorant with Gavin. And the most of the moments, I've only have, like, three games, three videos posted of funny moments. Valorant with Gavin... Gary's mod with Creed and Gavin, and then another Gary's mod with Creed and Gavin. And I think with those two, there's entertainment constantly, just because of the goofy stuff that we always say and do, even without recording. There's so much funny shit that happens that it's like, that is, I think, good enough. Even without mm -hmm. people, like, recording, like Vanoss and them, yeah, with friends being on that, I think just as long as you have friends that are willing to have a fun time and goof around is is good enough you know yeah obviously better content for maybe people that are looking to do the same thing of making good funny content but i think even then it's like just as long as you have people that are willing to goof around and have fun to do it is good enough because i think that's like the whole thing of making a funny video is to portray that we're all having a good time and it's just like a fun like oh yeah this is a good time like as if you're just hanging out with friends kind of feeling and give that off through the video you know mm -hmm. or just you know something funny to watch like i don't know i think if you just make whatever you sure. want you're gonna naturally get better you've heard this from mm -hmm. me like a million times oh yeah 100 percent. because like if you're making something that you want to do and that you're enjoying it's gonna be great because yeah it's like if i write a paper it's gonna be terrible because i just want to i just want to get it done and i don't want to do it so it's like it's gonna be bad but if you care about something you're gonna put the time and effort into making it good because you actually, you know, care. Yeah. Same thing with, like, drawing and stuff, where I'm like, wow, this looks ugly, and I don't appreciate it, so I'm going to keep making it look better or add something like, that looks a little off. Let's try this or try that, and you, you know, make it look good. Yeah, and I'm a terrible artist, too. I'm so bad. Yeah, it's just learning if you, well, that's if you want to learn, because anybody can draw. So many people have said, like, anybody can draw. It's yeah. just if you want to. I just... Right? Yeah, and that's the thing, is I don't really care to draw. <laughs> yep. That's fine. But I love Photoshop, and I love editing photos. I, it's it's such not, a weird little thing. Yeah, it's... It's less about... The drawing's more about, like, muscle memory and how you to learn how to like move your hand and the right strokes and stuff like that while like photoshop's a little easier to like less complicated more simple and 
you don't need like the most amazing skill to do something Mm -hmm. because like you're not going in depth detail while withdrawing you're doing every little detail like the shadows the lines the scar on your face how is that gonna look like photoshop you just take a picture that's already done and just edit it a little bit to look natural yeah without having to add a bunch of different details you know and i did not know that people draw with photoshop like the dude i follow on instagram has like his drawings all on photoshop i did not know photoshop was a drawing thing that people used but like i am not willing to pay money every so odd month and to do that no yeah thanks i just want to buy the program and have it like fl yeah i feel that well i i love premiere so much for video editing that i am willing to pay the subscription for it yeah um i think davinci resolve yeah it's really good have a subscription it's really I think good that one's like you buy it and i've been i've been using it because i used wondershare filmora mm-hmm. that one was kind of nice pretty basic it wasn't like super hard to learn um but it did have like It has preset stuff that you can use. Yeah. So, like, I can go in, go to stock media, audio, transitions, effects, elements. There's all sorts of pre-made stuff that it's like, oh, do you want to have, like, I'm looking at a thing that's like a neon element pack. It's like a thumbs up. Like, like button, like, like and subscribe, and it's a neon (laughs) thing moving. Uh, there's there's literally a a subscribe there's the like and subscribe like you know the part the like image the little animation that pops up on the bottom of people's videos and it pops up with the subscribe the bell and the butt and the thumb and a finger comes up and clicks on all of them yes literally has that like i'm looking at it right now oh like there there's literally a version of that that you can use so there's like all sorts of effects and stuff but you don't get them all unless you i think do a subscription thing or buy it but they have like a bunch of different pre-made stuff music that you audio and music you can use so that's a little harder now if i'm using da vinci because i'm like okay i have to look for songs that are not going to be copyrighted yeah um, that are royalty free and any effects that I want to do, some of them are probably going to have to be pre-made because there's not, like, a plethora of, like, crazy effects. There's only, like, basic things of fading in, fading out, certain, like, transitions that they have mm-hmm. in Da Vinci. But I work with it, and I kind of like Da Vinci a lot more. It's much easier to edit because... Okay, I think my favorite thing about DaVinci is you have... Oh, I just hit my mic. You have two screens that you can have. So you can literally have your media on the far left, and then when you're looking at a clip, you'll have on the left your clip that you're using or clicked on, and on the right the finished product of, like, your whole video. And so then you can be like, okay, here's my finished product. And then on the left, I can look through the video and, like, you can, like, cut parts out of a video that you don't want or, like, cut out a specific part without deleting the entire clip. And you can still have the whole clip. So you you don't have to, like, I don't know. Do you feel like... Have you used Premiere before? Never. I was I was gonna ask. Do you Wait, feel like actually, DaVinci is better than Premiere? But I feel yeah. like Premiere is a lot better. But what that's, did we use in high school? Do you know? We used Premiere. We did. Yeah. Okay. Because I think I used Premiere when I took like video editing. Probably yeah. then, and I was like, 
ages ago. Such a long time ago that I don't even remember. That, so I, I don't know. I've only used it one time. So I, I don't know. But you, you think it's better than Da Vinci? Yeah. Uh, is there like specific things that but make I, it better? I, that, I just, like better? I'm just way more familiar with Premiere though. Like I've heard, my uncle has told me that he started using Da Vinci just because like it's almost just as good as Premiere is what he said. Mm-hmm. But uh, you don't have to pay the subscription from Premiere, so it's just a yeah. lot more bang for your buck. Yeah. Also, I think you can buy like because there's certain things you can't do in DaVinci without buying it. But I think it's just a one-time buy. I don't think it's a full yeah thing. I'm actually gonna check check that. Ultimate question. Where do you see yourself in five years? In the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I, I don't know. That's such a hard question because I'm like, so much could happen in five years. Yeah, it, seriously. I am not and where I thought I would be five years ago. I, I'm definitely not where I thought I would be in a freaking apartment. Yeah, crazy. And, like doing my own shit. Uh, I never thought... Like, I don't know. There's not much that's changed. I think it's just little things so far of, like, I'm actually doing more YouTube stuff. I'm actually doing more of this or that. But, like, it's kind of stayed kind of the same. The only changes, really, is, like, family stuff, um, apartment, living somewhere else, a different job, same job. Mm Mm-hmm. Not much has changed, so it's hard to, like, I don't know where I could be. I don't know where I will be. Well, yeah, let me rephrase that. I don't know where I will be in five years, but I think there there's a chance I could be either a job that I actually enjoy in five years if I actually keep on learning my cool like game designing, drawing, maybe music or more YouTube or something, there's a chance that maybe in one, like one of those years, maybe I become a better YouTuber and actually I'm like creating something and it's grown and I can actually make money from it. Maybe, um, I, I've, maybe I've made a few games or so, uh, like maybe a game and put a portfolio out and get a job. But like those are possibilities, but that's not a guarantee of where do I think I will be? Because I have no idea. Well, like may- maybe that's a half glass, like a glass half empty kind of talk, but or half full. Who knows? No, I think it's totally fine. However, you see it, a cup like a couple reasons I asked that is because I was looking at like the self authoring program by Jordan Peterson earlier today. I was actually Self author authoring. Yeah, so you basically you kind of write a small autobiography for yourself over like I think a week or two. I'm not sure the exact time frame, but it's one. It's supposed to help you become a better writer, mm-hmm. and you pretty much cat- categorize like your past, your present, and then uh, what you think your future is gonna look like, and then. Uh, you just, I, th- I think from what I understand from the program is it'll teach you kind of how to write while you do it. Uh, I think it's like $30 and when you buy the program, it will give you a voucher for somebody else. So I wondered if you wanted that voucher one, because I might do it. That, I don't know. That's so interesting. Because I'm like, I I mean, that sounds really cool to try. But, like, again, my issue would be, like, I don't want to, like, get a voucher and then not use it because habits, right? Yeah. Like, I would actually have to do it. And my thing is, like, 
would I actually do it? Because, like, I would like to. That'd be interesting, because if I'm wanting to write stories and stuff, it would make me a better writer, which uh-huh. is very good. Because it's like, that sounds like a good idea. But also, would I actually do it is the problem. Because I'm like, it's probably going to be a habit thing again of, I actually have to do this. But like, well, if it's every week, would you say? Like, one I actually weeks? don't know the specific details. Uh, I kind of want, for me, I, I will give you kind of my perspective on habits. For me, mm-hmm. I see it as kind of an experience. Is how I'd put, like, I want to finish the experience, but I also have to really practice restraint when it comes to doing stuff because I'm the type of person that, uh, will really obsessively, like, do something for eight or nine hours if I don't practice restraint. Like, making a song. Yeah. For yeah. Long. Like, when I made my first mixtape or album i probably produced that for like eight or nine hours a day after work so i would work for eight hours and then i would go home and i would just produce basically until i went to sleep damn so my problem is restraint that's always been something that i've struggled with and i've gotten a lot better at it recently uh that's definitely a problem i have as well because i play games all the time right yeah. But also another problem is not just like it's not just restraint for me. It's also like not motivation or like actually pushing myself to do it or knowing what to do. Because like there'll be times where like I'll play a game or I just don't play a game for like hours and just watch a video because I'm like I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. I know I should draw, but do I want to do that right now or? It's like, I want to draw, but I don't do it. Or I want to write this, but I don't do it. I have, like, other distractions. I mean, like, like, like a key... restraint. A key word you have there is... You say, I should be doing this. When really, like, your your I, mental framing... Should be, should, I should, I, sh- I should want... Like, I want to do this, not that I should do this. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, the should implies, like... Uh... You're kind of putting, like, a... A pressure on yourself to actually do it mm. when when i tell you like like i want to do the jordan peterson thing and i'm interested if you want the voucher it the reason i ask it is because it's a natural curiosity for me to do it and i am mm. extremely confident that i will finish it if i do it uh just because oh, i just blanked What was I saying? How did I just lose that mid-sentence? Uh, the self-authoring program? You think oh, yeah. you will I'll see, finish it. I'll see it to the end because I want to get that full experience and see whether or not I like the program. That's how I've approached making albums or making videos. Or anything like that. Because I, I feel like I don't get the full experience. And it's really satisfying to just finish products. Or, or projects. And then... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so... What, I, I think my question is like... What, how... What is the whole... Authoring thing? Like what does it provide... What is the goal behind it again? Because you're like, you're authoring your life for how many weeks? I have no idea. Like, I think it's like a couple of weeks. Because it's like, or is it just a thing that you do consistently of like every one to two weeks you author every this or whatever? Yeah, you, you write like a certain amount of time a day and it kind of teaches you the process of, I guess, how he would write. Or how the people who made the program would write. Right. I I feel like... I feel like even if it doesn't make me... Like a better writer in what I'm trying to do per se. Mm -hmm. It's for the experience and like for the knowledge. I'm willing to buy the course. 
I offer it to you because I think it it might be helpful or not, but really it's even if you don't finish it, I don't really care because it's you're still like getting I I'm mostly just doing it for me, but it's giving me a voucher, so oh, for the say like the price of one. Yeah. Yeah, two for one special. That's actually... Yeah, and I think the reason it's <clears throat> like that is cuz we could bounce off of each other. Mm-hmm. what we're writing so I don't know maybe I'll I'll give it a shot maybe I'll send you the voucher if you want it you know the the whole point I... of it that the whole point of it is uh to kind of create a narrative from your past and present uh we were, I, I asked you the question of if where do you see yourself in five years it's like that program claims to help you to situate your life however you see it in like, I don't know, five years or the future. Mm -hmm. It helps you. Basically, it's a way to help you put your life on track to the vision you have in the next five years to be like, that's where I want to be in the five years. That's where I see myself. How do I make, like, I see myself there. What do I have to do to get there kind of thing to be like, okay, I see myself there. This is what I do to get there. Basically. Yeah. It's like, uh, I yeah. think my issue is I always overthink and I'm like, would I do it? Would I not? Should I just do it anyway? Maybe not, not waste time. And I always overthink and I'm like, fuck it. Just do it. Yeah. It gives a shit. If it's Even not... if. Yeah, Shia even LaBeouf if it's would not say. Like now, like even if, <laughs> just do it. Even <laughs> if I don't do it like right now or whatever, as long as I just do it in general, like give as long it a shot. If it's something you want to do, that's how I'd put it. I, I like think... you get naturally, you get motivated to do stuff you want to do. Self, self, self authoring just seems like journaling right yeah but more like uh, in a in a program way yeah and so i journaled for actually have my journal right fucking here yeah how has journaling been Mm. (laughs) not been doing it uh the last time i journaled okay the last time i journaled was April 20th of last year. Oh, man. Is that last year? No. Or did I put that in wrong? Well, it'd be over a year. No, it was this year. This year. I think I just put a 22 for some fucking reason. It was this year because I was like, no, this was recent. Because the one before that was is November. And I'm like, that is not fucking right. I just put, that's this year, April of this year. Yep. It was literally the day I pierced my ears, April 20th. You just felt like journaling that day then, huh? Or what'd you write? Unless you don't want to share that. Dude, this is dog shit. (laughs) You don't have Basically, to tell me. Uh, I was just like, not a crazy eventful day, but still good. Past few weeks have been pretty good. I feel like I've been doing better mentally and been enjoying things without feeling bad. Um, I was like, oh, so I got my ears pierced today. Uh, I was just like, fuck it. But, um, I'm paraphrasing, by the way. I decided to do it because I thought they were cool. Try something new. And not worrying about what others would think and just went for it. Um. And then the last sentence is, I'm happy with my decisions, and I'm more willing to try new and different things with less worry of what others think. It's all I have for now. Here is to a better day. And every single time Aww. on my journals, I would always write, here is to a better day. Every single time I did. Yeah, why do you do that? When I started. I don't know. It's just like a way to like keep keep a better mind of like, instead of being like, just that was that day and not look forward to the next day i think it's a way to say here is 
Like, basically keep your head up, like, just look forward to tomorrow, right? Here is to a better day. Yeah. To think, make your day better, make it good. Like, I don't know. Dude, that's a way some, to say, keep it up. That's some, like, Roman philosopher forward. stuff. I love that. <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, here's a better day. No, like, I've never heard anyone actually I, do that. Yeah, I just, every, I don't know why. I just was like, in a sad thing of like, I think at first it started as I'm expresso, I feel awful or something. And like trying to be optimistic of like, this day sucked. Here's to a better one. Like, here's to a better day kind of thing. And now it's just like, here's to a better day. You know, more upbeat, more like, you know. Let's go. Yeah, a continual improvement of days. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, on one journal entry, uh, at the end of it, I was like, slow down and be patient with yourself, because I think this one was... Oh. Uh, this, was, uh, this was a day where I like blew up and got really angry. Um, <clears throat> it was during the time when I'm like, talking to you about like everybody it just feels like everybody's always attacking me or this or that yeah which i haven't had that feeling in a while thank well, god well that's good and uh, i was just like after writing that and saying like i'm angry and stuff and i understand that like it takes time it's like p.s slow down be patient with yourself to be like you it's gonna take time i understand that and yeah uh, but the last actual journal entry was April 20th of this year. Ex but that was only for like a day. I actually wrote dreams down because I was like, here's dream one, here's dream two that I wrote down. So I was like, oh, people like write out their dreams. So I did. And hmm. I have like three dreams written down. What's one of them? You might have told me one of them at one point, but I might need a reminder. Um, I it looked so it begins, but it looked like I was next to a lake, trying to fish with some friends. The only one that I was that was recognizable was uh, Creed, but for a moment, the water seemed to change slightly to a dirty, darker shade, like muddy water. Then a shark just appears as if out of nowhere and swims onto the beach and then drifts away quickly as it how it appeared. Except I didn't add, I'm pretty sure that fucking shark was phasing through the ground. So it was like a big shark that was like halfway out of the water, but also halfway <laughs> in the ground because it was like on the beach part. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and then it just like immediately changed to I'm in the back of a truck. It's dark. And I'm fishing with like some like YouTubers from Dope or Nope, <laughs> and I'm just fishing, and it was really fucking weird. And so I'm fishing with them, and at some point we get close to the water, and we're in like these like underwater suits or whatever, and we like go down with a rope, and instead of the lake just being like, oh, it's a lake, it's about this small, it like immediately goes into like a big chasm, just going down. And then we, like, land down. Um, but there was one point, I wrote this so bad, because I was like, that's what came to mind. And I said, before this, I was swimming with others. Uh, so, like, the shark happens, and then all of a sudden I'm in that dirty, mucky water. And I'm swimming with, like, Kyler and Kyson and them. And, like, I'm in the water. I go down, try to swim down. And then I, as I start to swim back up, there's, like, these weird, like, worm mosquito looking like fish things and there's just a freaking swarm of them like in a tornado kind of effect and one like hits me in the like side of the face because they're coming to my left hits me in my ear and i'm like freaking out and then i like just appear in the back of the truck and then i go down into the dark dude that's and you, you remember quite a bit of details too yeah and like i go down and I go down, I lay, I get to the bottom, and I look up, and it doesn't look very far, right? So, like, I look up, and it's like, it's just not far, but it's like a chasm. Like, it looks like a chasm, but as soon as I get to the bottom, I look up, and it looks like 
probably like 15 feet away from the, the top. But I can see the sunlight and the person at the top out of the water as another person's coming down. I look to my right and the two of us go over to this hole. And it was like I had to crouch down and get in. And it was like, oh, it, like think of like those glowing blue mushrooms in a cave, but underwater and more like wet and jellyfish like. And as Whoa. we start going closer, it starts to look like creatures are coming out and like there's some weird things. And then we look behind us after hearing something and like a bunch of squid crab looking jellyfish things start like coming at us. And then I hold up my hands like I'm freaking Iron Man and I just start like blasting like I'm Iron Man <laughs> at him. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like blasting them and it like all of a sudden we're like climbing out and we get up out of the water and then it changes to us running as if we're like laughing like ha 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 and then we hear i hear something behind me and it sounds like a monster like a wolf werewolf or monster of some sort and then we just start booking it right and there is no like fading in between of like stuff happening it just cuts to this after the water thing and we're running to a cabin in the middle of the night like pitch black we get to the cabin and it's like I'm holding a camera, like in uh, Blair Witch. And I'm just like running with a camera. And then we get to the cabin, get in, hide. And then it's like daylight, right? The sun's already rising. Like early morning, Whoa. and we're right outside. And then that was it. And then I woke up, and then it was just freaking freezing in my room because my window <laughs> was open. And I forgot about that. Dude, you should use that for your D&D &D world when you start your D&D oh, yeah. &D campaign. Like, that's so interesting. And then, like, another dream, I think I told you. This was more recent. Um, this one I did not tell you. This one actually was, like, a video game almost. Ooh. But, like, I think this one I was also, like, in a school. It was so... Yeah, this one was very short because I couldn't remember all of it. But, like... The part where I remember at the beginning was, like, I am in, like, it looks like ruins, like a cave, but in ruins, like, as if it was, like, an ancient city. And it's, like, super dark, and there was a girl with a companion that I think was, like, a glowing cat or something. Mm. And she was, like, in a different dimension, so I'm, like, on the outside looking in through, like, a portal. And... She's like, I'm like watching from like very close, watching inside. She's like in that area of like ancient city debris. Um, and she's like collecting souls, right? Trying to like, it's like the idea it felt like was she is saving these souls. She's collecting them to like take them somewhere and like have them move on, right? She's collecting yeah. the souls. And then this big creature that was like, a demon dark dude whatever i don't like kind of like blobish huge and he just started like taking the souls like to steal them and then it started going red so instead of like this dark with like blue souls and stuff it went red immediately when he showed up so this is black figure with a red outline with all these souls starting to like turn from like blue to red as they were getting sucked up and the cat's like we have to go and then they leave but, like, they're fighting for a second, and she, like, loses a heart. So this was, like, a HUD that I'm seeing as if I'm playing oh. a game. <laughs> so it was, like, I'm looking in, and then all of a sudden now I'm playing a game, and I'm playing them. She gets hit, a heart's gone, and then we leave, and she comes out into another ancient area of, like, a ritual would happen. And there's, like, waterfall. So it's, like... <clears throat> She comes out, and it's like I'm her, but not her. Like, I'm like, it's like I'm playing a game, right? And I'm her. Yeah. And I'm just looking at it. And it, like, she comes out through the portal running towards me, comes through, it turns around to, like, face kind of like the side or to her back. And you look out, and you see, like, cobbled pathway. So, like, just a little pathway going in. In the middle, there's, like, 
braziers on four corners of a so there's like a square with braziers on each corner and like a big one in the middle so it's like small torched ones and then a big one in the middle N not lit still dark but there's water on the side so it's like the pathway is like the bridge basically so there's only water the rest of the way so it's like you have one pathway to the middle and then another pathway leading to the exit to a big door on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then on the rest of the area is like walls with water. So it's like there's water, you're on your path, and then there's waterfalls coming out of holes on the walls. Whoa. And it was just dark. And then all of a sudden I'm in a school. What? Yeah. Don't <laughs> like it was the fucking weirdest thing. So like Dreams, that happens dude dude they're fucking weird and um <laughs> but like i went into like i'm like walking down a hallway and i'm like this kind of feels familiar so it was like the feeling of like uh, rigby high school but also shaped differently to feel like a college or a different school completely and oh my god it just clicked i'm remembering more before that so, like, I go into the classroom, right? Yeah. So, like, the game happens, and then the school happens. But before the game, I was in school. So, like, I was in school, I'm sitting down, and stuff's happening. I th And then it changes to the game, and then after the game, it changes back to the school. And then I'm walking to the class that I was just in when it cut to the game. So, I'm going back to the same classroom... That was like, this seems familiar, like deja vu or something. And I look over and there's kids like sitting in the seat that I was in before the, the cut to the game. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Who's dude. in my seat? So I now yeah, have to just go sit seat. randomly. Little bastards. So I had to sit somewhere else. And then, <laughs> and then that was it. And then I woke up after like a little bit of time in the classroom. <laughs> it was so fucking weird. Oh man, dude, I feel like oh, dreams. This are, one's weird. I feel like dreams are such a crazy. Like I feel like they push imagination to places I didn't even think that I could create. Yeah, like I now have two game ideas from the dream I just told you, and the one that I have also written with more detail. Like, two game ideas. Have you ever played a game that's been inspired by dreams? A game that's been... I don't think I have. I can't remember the name of the one I'm thinking of. I think... Uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Is it LSD Simulator? Is that what that one's called? Oh, fuck. That one's inspired by that guy's dreams. And there's another one I played, like, a couple years ago that was inspired by dreams but uh you like jumped around on the inside of a built computer and like a lot of the platforming was like the parts of the computer That's i remember actually... that was one of the levers yeah or one of the levels it was really cool the only thing i can think of as a dream is um there is a game called uh dreamscaper mm -hmm. and it's a roguelike a roguelite so at one point you are in your dreams confronting certain things, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like nightmares, right? Nightmares are happening. So like you confront your nightmares and you explore the dreamscape. And then when you're awake, you build relationships with people out in the world of like gas stations or buildings or stuff. You go unlock other stories and earn upgrades. <laughs> That sounds really fun. That sounds cool. I haven't played much of it, but it was cool. And I, I almost did the first boss, like, first run, first try ever playing the game. And then I died. Uh, Dude, but it's it, the like, gamer in you. Mm -mm. Playing Hades, Dark Souls, and Enter the Gungeon has really done it. Yeah. But, like, super cool. And the whole... We, that was weird a weird tangent we went off of like, oh, I was journaling, and then 
I also wrote dreams and then went to dreams. Yeah. It's weird how conversations go of like <laughs> you you kind of forget the point you were talking and you just go on a tangent of interesting things. You're getting too meta on me. <laughs> okay, um, I I got one more question for you, I think. Oh shit. Switching to from some very lighthearted talk about dreams. I'm gonna hit you with this a really serious one. Before you hit the serious thing. Okay. Yes, I would be. Ac I'm actually when I talk about it, I would be interested in doing the self-authoring. That might be a good way to like. Okay. Yeah. I'll, if I uh, if I do it, I'll send you the voucher. Okay. Now. Continue. So you're 23, right? Unfortunately. I am too. At the end. But at 23 years old. Spark McGinn, the man himself. What do you think is the most important thing you've learned in your life so far? The most important thing? Oh my. Yeah, you can think about it for a second if you need to. There's so... I... Ah, there's so many different things. First one that comes to mind. The first thing that came to mind was... Just... Don't, it was like, don't worry about others. Worry about yourself, right? Like, don't care what people say about you. Don't care what they say you should do. Don't care, like, what they say about, like, oh, you, you should do this. You should do that. Oh, don't cut your hair that way. Oh, don't get piercings. Don't do that. Like, I'm going to do what I want. I shouldn't worry about other people being judgy and, like, it's like that, okay? It's your opinion like i could probably say something about your hair but i ain't gonna because <laughs> it shouldn't yeah. matter yeah like it's what you like like do what you want like that's the most important thing I'm, I'm trying to be better at that for sure but it's something that i'm learning and that seems the most important is just be you do what you want don't worry about everybody else that seems to be the main message i keep seeing everywhere um, is especially from you. Just don't worry about everybody else. Just do what you want. Like that whole thing of who cares? Do you? Yeah, it's a good one. I like that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, I watched a video on TikTok. Unfortunately, TikTok. I know. Uh, I watched a Plague. video. Uh, it it kind of is sometimes, bro. <laughs> There's so much bullshit on there, bro. Like, some dude... I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go on a tangent about that. Um, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna stick. That's something I need to not do is go on tangents. No, you're good. Back to my point. I'll, maybe that's a later thing. Anyways, the video I watched was this... There's, like, three people on a podcast, right? Two okay. dudes and this chick. They're sitting there. One of them asks, should men chase after women? And one guy goes, the one dude's just like, no. Is His whole answer is, don't do it. Do your own thing. Don't focus on that. Because you do not, why would you put all this time and effort into that and then have it gone, basically, is how I was like, trying it. It's like, focus on you. You do your own thing, and they will just come most of the time. Like, obviously, explore your options and all that. Like, he's not saying not date, not have fun, you know, uh, like dating and exploring. But put your focus on yourself, right? Focus on you. Focus on what you want to do. And don't put, put, like, dating and getting a girl as your priority, right? Yeah. No, that's I think great... that's good. Uh-huh. But... I love that. The issue with that video that I had was uh -oh. the other two people going, bro, what? Like, they were, like, childish. Like, I don't think that's, like, like, they basically were, like, disagreeing with him in a way. And I'm like, that's, you're so stupid. He's not saying to disregard <laughs> dating in general and all that. He's just saying, like, focus on yourself. Like, they seemed, like, all, every single comment I saw was, like, they're, like, two kids. He's too mature for these guys. And it's like, yeah, he is. They're, like, yeah. still childish and, like, 
hoeing around. Because he's basically like, no one's, like, <clears throat> no woman is willing. Nah, that's a lie. Most women are not willing to settle down at 20. Right. Yeah. Like, in your 20s, most women are not. In our area, that's... In our area, that is a different story. A lot right. of women want to settle down. Yes. And for me, I'm like, I will settle down with someone... Too early, though. ...is worth it. Yeah, it's too early. Like, I saw your freaking Instagram thing where it was like, get married when, like... When you're ready. When you feel like, when you're ready, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like, just get married if you want to get married. You're like, you don't have to be married. Uh, and don't do it too soon because it feels worse to get married and then divorce immediately after, right? Like, yeah. I would rather make sure that I have such a good feeling about this person that it's like, I'd probably ask the question of, would is there anything that I have learned that would make me divorce this person after, like, years with them? No. Right? Had they change like maybe that's not the right question maybe it's like ask questions of are they a forever person that i would live with constantly for my whole life if they're a good right? partner yeah yeah because it's like it's not only like being a good partner but also just being a, a good person because even with like living with somebody like roommates mm. you're gonna get on each other's nerves but if you can like disregard any of the things that they do that get on your nerves sometimes and still like like with friends people do stupid shit people fight whatever if you can do that your whole life with a friend have like that kind of relationship that you've had your whole life with this per with a friend have that same relationship with your significant other and just be like you know i feel like that's the kind of relationship you need that's why they say marry your best friend you know. Yeah. It did. Uh, I don't know if I made my point. I don't, I feel like I went on a tangent again. No, nah, I, I think I think make... it was good. You were exploring the aspects of that. I think pretty much. Yeah, just do your thing. Uh, I think if you naturally notice you're attracted to people, it's okay to kind of check it out and then maybe ask them on a date if you like what you're. Yeah, it's seeing, cool. but a lot of people pursue a dating prospect at the like cost of themselves. Mm -hmm. When really you should be focused on building a life that you want, regardless if you have a partner or not. Mm -hmm. And my issue with a lot of things about like dating, it always feels like from the perspective of my perspective towards everybody else, it always looks like and sounds. Like, um, freaking hold on. First of all, there's so much, it's like dry in here. I'm drinking water and it feels like there's dust in my throat. I freaking can't stand this. Oh no. And I ran out of water. I mean, we um, can, we can probably call it too. Uh, I'm, yeah, like, it's whenever you feel like it. I'm just like, whatever.